pastor of New Life Christian Center. And uh, we're going to be uh, in the Word of God today, and we're going to be discussing the theme of hope. And hope, uh, hope, love, joy, peace, those are the, uh, you know, in the coming weeks you'll hear us mention on all of that. But, uh, you know, hope is a feeling of expectation and desire for, uh, for a certain thing to happen. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right. It's like you've got a promise. And that hope is not like wishful thinking. That's how most people think it's wishful thinking. Like, I hope this will happen. This is not what the Bible means by hope. Biblical definition of hope is a confident expectation. Can you say that with me? A confident expectation. My confident expectation is that the Lord's going to return. Right? I, my confident expectation is that I've been saved, you know, by grace through faith. Do you understand? That, that's a hope. I mean, it's a promise. I believe that. I believe and I know my hope is that I'll always be well, that I'll have a prosperity. Why? Because the word declares it. And so that hope, it's not like I hope this is going to work. Mm -hmm. No, the hope is the promise. Can you that's say that right. word? A promise. a promise. It's a promise that you believe. Now, um, you know, a lot of us hope that there'll be money in the Social Security, you know, uh, checks when we get old enough to receive them. And, uh, you know, that might be wishful thinking. But the deal is, is there is an expectation yeah. that when I reach a certain age and I, you know, and I'm confident yeah. that the government's going to back up what they're doing. Do you hear what yeah. I'm saying? And so it's, it's in that kind of a, a realm. It's a firm assurance regarding things that are unclear. Mm -hmm. A hope is a fundamental component of the life of the righteous. Without hope, life loses its meaning. And in death, there is no hope. The righteous who trust or put their hope in God will be helped. And they will not be confounded or disappointed or put to shame. The righteous who have the trustful hope in God have a general confidence in God's protection and help and are free from fear and anxiety. Now, let me say this. I wonder, has anybody ever been praying and you were disappointed at what had happened? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's true. It happens. Uh, praying for like my friends that had COVID and they passed. And people say, well, why did he die and this and that? And, you know, my answer is, you know, my hope and trust is in God. And his hope and trust is in God. And, and Jesus is the author, finisher of our faith. But he's got the keys of life and death. And so he knows, you know, when we are finished our race. And that's my hope. I'm confident in that. Mm -hmm. You know, that me and Nancy are going to finish our race. Okay, I think I'm going to win the race and go before she does. Okay, but uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but I don't know. I don't want to poop out at the end. You know what I mean? So, uh, but that's you know that's our 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 hope, our promise. Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. Get ready for your faith to score. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil. That's it. To give you a future <laughs> and a what? A hope. Whoa, Jeremiah speaking. And I mean, you know, he's like the judgment prophet, you know. You know, this is going to happen, that's going to happen, you know. And uh, and here he's saying, man, you know, your hope is in God here. I love that. And Psalm 33, 17, 22, for those that are taking notes. Um, a horse is a vain hope for safety. Mm -hmm. Neither shall it deliver any by its great strength. Mm -hmm. You know, horses were a big deal back then. And he goes, behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him or reverence him, on those who hope in his mercy to deliver their soul from death and keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield for our hearts shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us just as we hope in you. As we trust in you. It's, you know, the the, the uh, uh, power partners is like, you know, faith and hope. And they go together. You know, now faith is. Right? Now faith is. 
you know, and it says, you know, uh, it's the evidence of things, you know, that we can't do, the substance of things that we can't see, but, you know, it's the, the, uh, the evidence, you know, it's the hope, it's, right, the substance of things that we yeah. hope for, you know, now faith is the substance, there's substance there, you know, a belief there of something that I'm hoping for, I don't have it yet, but I'm, that's my hope, right? And it's, there's evidence in that faith. The evidence is the witness and the belief that we have in, in Jesus Christ. Well, I love the, uh, you know, Philippian, uh, excuse me, Hebrews 11, 1, 3. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. And that uh, the things which are seen were not made of things that were visible. God's creation came by the word. And Jesus Christ is the word. In other words, it was creative by nature. Now we have got that creative nature in this, in us, as we speak his word, as we speak the truth about a situation, not going on our feelings or our intellect, mm -hmm. but going by what we believe in the inner man. 1 Corinthians 13, 17, love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Think about that. What is love? Love hopes all things thinks the best, believing for people's salvations and deliverances, believing that, you know, that, that, that is the entrance of God. And our hope in that is, is like we're trusting God to do all, you know, do these things. I like um, 1 Corinthians 13, 13, and now abideth faith, hope, and love, these three, Amen. but the greatest of this is love. No. So faith and hope and love, they all go together. They all go together. Romans 12, 9, 13. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. In honor, somebody say honor. honor. Giving preference to one another. Not lagging in diligence. Fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope. Patient in tribulation continuing steadfastly in prayer. Why? <laughs> Distributing to the needs of the sense and giving a hospitality. You know, wow, there's a whole lot there. And that's out of Romans 12, you know? And then that, that's the, the, uh, the chapter, um, uh, actually it's not, but that's the chapter, you know, it goes above that about different gifts of the spirit, apostles, prophets, apostles pastor, teachers, all these things. And um, so this, this is let the love of God be without hypocrisy. Hebrews 6, 19, 20. This hope, listen, this hope we have as an anchor of the soul. What is the hope he's talking about? Our salvation. Being sure and steadfast in which enters the, pre, uh, enters the presence behind the veil where the for, uh, forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus having become a high priest forever, right? According to the order of Melchizedek. Think about that. We have a high priest that knows. We have a God that knows what it's like to be a human being. What it's like to stub his toe. What it's like to get a splinter. What it's like to be hungry, to be thirsty. What it's like to be dirty. You know, what it's like, amen, to be betrayed. What it's like to endure, you know, uh, unrighteous persecution. He knows all of this. Every emotion you can think of, he went through. Everything. No matter how you feel, he knows. Man, he can identify with your suffering. Yes. Hallelujah. And so, when we're going through something, he understands what, what we're going through. And my hope always is that, Lord, you know, whatever this is or what's ever happening to me, mm -hmm. um, please don't stop it until you're satisfied. Because mm -hmm. I don't want to go around this mountain again. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. don't, don't, you know, when you ask for an intervention, you cry loud enough, he'll intervene. But there'll be another set of circumstances where you're going to have to trust them and go through it. 
And that suffering is not necessarily physical, but it's more emotional. More emotional. He knows what it's like to have lost loved ones. Hallelujah. Hebrews 6.19. I already did that. Anchor the soul. Oh, our hope for others. 2 Corinthians 1, seven. Our hope for you is steadfast because we know that you are partakers of the sufferings so that you will be partakers of the consolation. You know, you see people going through things. You know, you know, our hope is like, hey, it's in Christ. Mm -hmm. It's Christ in them, the hope of glory. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? And so we look to that and, you know, we have a confidence. In Galatians 5.5, 5, For we, through the Spirit, eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Yes. Now that's important because as long as I'm looking for my own deeds to be good enough, guess what? I disqualify myself. Right? I'm not saying that you got you got to live right, you know, if you want to have a relationship with God. But it's not so much about doing this and not doing that as it is just loving on God and loving your neighbor as yourself. And so what he says here, um, you know, we wait eagerly for the hope of righteousness by faith. What is that? We'll never be, you know, right enough, you know, apart from Jesus, you know. You know, to be with God. And we have his righteousness imputed to us by faith. So that we don't go before God with our own goodness. But we go marked by the blood of Jesus, grafted in. So when we go to God, no matter, you know, how ugly we might have been, you know, need to ask forgiveness for our sins. But he's going to listen to us. He's going to hear us, you know. He's not going away from the job. You know, he's, he, he's going to love you uh, for all eternity. And I, I, I don't know, this, I, is this meant ministering to anybody? These different things, these attributes of God, how yeah. important it is to have that hopeful attitude for the worst case. Mm -hmm. You know, I, people that have been sick with COVID and, you know, they're on a ventilator. I'm still hopeful that, you know, God is going to touch them. I keep praying that way. I'm hopeful. But... Sometimes, you know, you know, the Lord knows better than me, you know, but I'm going to stand, you know, in the gap and, you know, just intercede for that person. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. That's good teaching right there. Now, may the God of hope. Oh, this is it. This is my, my this is my verse. Romans 15, 13. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Now, there's a little more to that that's overflowing, that we're so full of God that we overflow. And it says, and I like um, the, uh, the message, not the message, the uh, passion. It says, till we radiate hope, mm -hmm. radiate. In other words, everywhere we go, we radiate hope. People mm -hmm. see us, they have a hope. I know sinners that look at me and know I'm a preacher mm -hmm. and knew my life before, and they're hopeful. They might not be following God like me, mm -hmm. but they're hopeful. Well, if, if if God can do that with Ken Gary, right. I know he can do it with he me. Do, do you hear me? Yeah. And, and that's the deal. And so that is our testimony. Our testimony is not so much our words, but a demonstration of his power, mm -hmm. not with signs, wonders, and miracles, which I'm all for, but how we live our lives. The real power of God is that we lead a godly life, a good life. We lead a kind life, a merciful life. Do you hear what I'm saying? And that is what's going to change. That's how we change our surroundings. I mean, it's important to, to preach and declare and all these things and to pray. But, you know, we have a great cloud of witnesses that went on before us. But you'd see your neighbors, you know. I get a little anxious, you know, sometimes on the food line, you know, when you're trying to pick the line that you want to be in. And sometimes the shortest line isn't the fastest line because right. that lady in front of you has got like 5,000 coupons that she's trying to redeem, you know, and a half hour later with the managers over there. You know. Does that ever happen to anybody else? I mean, you know, and I just kind of back out of the line and get on another one. You know, you know. And then that line you were in moved. Yes. <laughs> Well, I, I, I can't say no. I mean, it just seems that's, you know, everybody's experience. But it's like, you know, we get, our, get you know, 
and uh, but we're to prefer one another, you know. You know, you want to really surprise somebody is let them go ahead of you. Yeah. If they've just got one or two things, you know, and they go, oh, no, 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 go on, go ahead, that's all right. You know, oh, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Little acts of kindness, you know. At any rate, so I want to be that guy. I want to radiate hope. Here, listen to it in the passion, okay? Now may God, mm -hmm. inspiration and fountain of hope. God is a fountain of hope. That is part of his nature. He is hope. <laughs> I'll read that again. Now may God, the inspiration and fountain of hope, fill you. Somebody say, fill me. Fill me. To overflowing with uncontainable joy and perfect peace as you trust in him. Are you overflowing in uncontainable joy? Are you overflowing in perfect peace? Are you trusting? Yeah, sometimes somebody said, but you know, are you trusting in him? And when you're anxious, you see, you gotta say, wait a second. I gotta put my faith in God. I gotta trust that he knows what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to wrap this up without finishing this message. He goes, and he says this, um, uh, and may the power of the Holy Spirit continually surround your life with his superabundance until you radiate hope. Now that's Paul. Man, think about that. Hold it. I want to be, you know, overflowing with uncontainable joy. Mm -hmm. I want perfect peace. And I want to trust in him. Mm -hmm. And I want the power of the Holy Spirit to continually surround me, right? And his super, with a super abundance. How many want a super abundance? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, a super. I, I, super means like beyond. Mm -hmm. What you need, not abundance is like overflowing of, you know, I can't use it all, but to where you're actually radiating the nature of God. Mm -hmm. Hope, you're radiating who he is. People see you and they get hopeful. Why? Because you have got a prayer life with mm -hmm. God. You've got a connection to Jesus. See, Scott recognized that, my cousin, you know, he recognized that, that wait, he's got a, you know, and that's important. You know, that people can see your walk and see how you live your life. And that we become approachable. Ephesians 2.12, that at the time you were uh, without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the com covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Now he's talking to the Ephesians that, you know, that's where, uh, you know, Paul brought the gospel, you know. Uh, to the church of Ephesus and they had a uh, you know actually it was his home base for like three and a half years and uh, you know taught at the uh, the hall of Tyrannus and it was like a bible college and they'd work all day making uh, uh, you know tents and the like with the Quill and Priscilla and then at, at night you know he'd preach he'd preach at night at, you know when everybody getting off of work at six o'clock and you know he'd keep going and you know they didn't have these, uh, you know, one-hour messages. <laughs> a lot of times they'd be there. Paul preached one time, uh, and uh, this kid, uh, yeah, actually it was Jesus, I'm sorry. Isn't that right? Yeah, Jesus. And uh, no, he just fell down. And another time he did fall out a window. There was, that did happen, yeah. But uh, the guy came down, broke his neck, and Jesus healed him. And, you know, all kind of cool things, man, in the Bible. I love it. At any rate, uh, 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 Colossians 1, 3 through 6, we give thanks to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always with you since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of your love uh, for all saints because of uh, the hope which is laid up for you in Christ Jesus. You know, that foundation, you have to like, when you're bringing your kids up, okay, and then all of a sudden they decide they go to college or wherever, and you know, they're not living for God, baby, like they lived in your house, you know, and they're doing things that you might not agree with, but guess what? You have this hope of that you brought them up a certain way. There's this hope, you gave them their bad, your best, and that they're gonna grow in Christ at some point. Do you hear what I'm saying? They, no matter what it might look like now, you can have that mm -hmm. hope, that assurance, if you've got faith in that. And I mean, that's really important for your loved ones to come in. You know, might not be the way you want it or when you want it, 
And it might not be as fast as you want it, you know what I'm saying? But guess what? God's working. He never stops. He never stops. And, you know, his word is always working. Continue to pray. Continue to feed them and, and love on them. All right. Um, I'm going to just jump down here. They've got a bunch of others, but, uh, you know, in the interest of time. Hebrews 10, 23 through 25. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful. And it says, and let us uh, consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. Amen. As we see like things, as they get worse, mm -hmm. as, you know, you might not like whatever, the COVID thing or the stock market thing, economy thing, whatever. Mm -hmm. But, you know, let us encourage, exhort one another, you know, into Christ. Let's, you know, build one another up, amen, in the faith. And unfortunately, there's a lot of people that are not coming to the local churches and they're watching online. And they might be seeing two or three people and we thank God for each and every one. But if you're watching today, you need to be in a local church and not forsake the assembling of our of ourselves together right. it's important why because you know one could put a thousand a flight two put ten thousand a flight yeah. and when we come together and we can see we can feel the the presence of god we will also hear god together Amen. and when we hear god together we have what they call corporate faith <laughs> it's great to have individual saving grace and saving faith but Corporate faith is when we hear the Spirit of the Lord speak to each one of us, whether through prophecy or a demonstration, that we know that we know that God is in this place. Yes. Amen. And then beyond that, if there's a word concerning a work that he'd have us do or an event, we can do it as unto the Lord. This isn't just something that we thought about, <laughs> conjured up. But we had a word from the Lord. We had a word from the Lord about the preschool to build it. We had a word from the Lord as far as expanding that building. We had a word from the Lord, you know, concerning, I mean, doing the different events that we did with a lot of sweat, time, effort, and sacrifice by people just like you. Just like you. And that came, it was a corporate faith that we put our shoulder to the plow, so to speak, uh, right next to each other, you know, to make certain things happen. Hallelujah. You always have a, a leader or a visionary, but it takes other people to catch that vision. That's right. To be able, to, I want you to catch this vision right now for this Christmas party. That, I mean, this is going to be a break. Start praying for your relatives. Start praying for the people that you want to come. Make that list. We're going to, you know, have it out where you can, we want some RSVPs um, so that we'll know how much food to purchase and all. But it's going to be a swell time. Amen? Amen. Are you ready? Yes. That's right. Do you have hope today? Yes. <laughs> How many are hoping that I'm going to close? Yes. <laughs> well, I don't want to disappoint you. Let's all stand. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Let's all stand. We're going to close. Hey, we thank you guys for watching on the internet. There's a donate button there if you'd like to help us out. Or the storehouse. Simply press that donate button and it'll take you to an app. And it's safe and it's secure. And we do appreciate all those that do a little bit of online giving. Amen. want to remind you, as Christmas comes up, give to your local church. Amen. And if you're watching us on the uh, internet, we thank you. But if you belong to another local church, don't forget to support your local church with tithes and offerings. Yeah. And get in the meetings, you know, as often as you can. Support your pastor. Pray for him. And especially pray for the pastor's wife and children. Amen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially pray for them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We need all the help we can get. So, hallelujah. We just appreciate you. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Nancy, you feel like closing a prayer? I could see, man. She was taking notes. Either that or she was on her Facebook. I know. Yeah. Thank I was you. About to die, but I'm going to tell you this. This will give you life. I ha this is like the key scripture for today. Okay. I have to read it again. Now may God, the fountain of hope. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Can you hear that? I do. Woo. 
fill you to overflowing. Receive Amen. it as we as we just read it here. Just receive this word because it's do. alive. Let it be alive in you. Let fill you to overflowing with uncontainable joy and perfect peace as you trust in him. There and may is. the power of the Holy Spirit continually surround your life yes. as, with his supernatural abundance until you radiate hope. Now, every contrary word and action, every bit of our history right now that says there is no reason to hope, mm -hmm. we cancel that lie that was sent from hell and we break the power, mm -hmm. amen, of every suggestion. And Lord, we receive from you our fountain of hope. Lord, we hear the waters overflowing, oh God. And Lord, by faith, we open up right now to receive that. We break, amen, amen, just the, uh, the umbrella, that which would try to block, amen, the blessing of the Lord and we release Amen. Just the fountain of hope over our lives right now. Yes, in Jesus', Jesus name, name, everyone said amen. 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 amen.